Welcome to Salon Talks. I'm Olivia Lupino, and today I'm so excited because I'm joined by Camila Mendez. You know her from seven seasons on Riverdale, um, from one of my favorite movies, Do Revenge, um, and recently movies like Upgraded and now Musica. Mm -hmm. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm really excited to be talking to you. Um, you've put out two rom-coms in something like two months. Did you always know that this was going to be the genre for you or a genre <laughs> you wanted to get into? Not really. Um, I actually, I think it was just more of a coincidence that these two projects came out at the same time. Um, I definitely shot them in the same year, um, but I always categorized Musica as a different thing than just a rom-com. Um, I mean, I love rom-coms. I'm not shitting on rom-coms, but uh, can I curse here? Yes, you can. Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not shitting on rom-coms or anything, but, but Musica felt like so much more because it wasn't just a rom-com. It had this like Brazil Brazilian American cultural aspect. It had this synesthetic perspective, which I'd never seen before. It's a musical. It's also a coming of age story. I just think rom-com was like probably the most appealing way to package all of that together. But the truth is, is that the, this movie has so many genres going for it. Yeah, and I would, I would actually definitely agree with that. And I think, you know, speaking to the coincidence, there's such a rom-com resurgence right now. Yeah. And I'm really excited about Me it. Too. Are you feeling that excitement yes. from fans? And yeah, a thousand percent. I, I mean, especially with Upgraded, as we were saying, that one I felt really struck a chord with people. And obviously, I love the movie and I was excited about it, but it was genuinely surprising to see how many people we're craving that kind of rom-com resurgence. That one, oh, it scratched every <laughs> edge. And I know that you said that The Devil Wears Prada was like a touch point for mm -hmm. Upgraded. What were your touch points for Musica? Because you're right, it is, it's not just a rom-com, it's a lot of different things. So was there anything you were referencing or is it really just something all its own? I mean, it definitely is something all on its own. There, there aren't that many Brazilian films in Hollywood or Brazilian American films in Hollywood. Um, but I think like, what it rem immediately reminded me of was Forgetting Sarah Marshall, kind of. It had very similar elements to it. I think the puppet thing helped with that, but also, you know, he's got like the ex-girlfriend and this new girl that he meets and he's lost. And I think there's something very similar, a very similar storyline in Musica. Um, but then it also kind of gave 500 Days of Summer a little bit. And, uh, you know, we say La La Land, I think, because that's like the most recent modern musical that we can all think of, um, even though I feel like it's very tonally different. But there is that sort of romantic musical feeling with this, too. Yeah. So there were a lot of. No, I see points. all of those yeah. in this. Absolutely. And now that you've been into and you're obviously a fan of rom-coms, what would you say makes a good rom-com? Chemistry above all else. Um, I got really lucky that I had chemistry with Archie and Upgraded because we'd never, you know, m met in person before filming. And same thing with Musica. I'd never met Rudy before we, you know, I mean, Zoom, obviously we met over Zoom, but I didn't actually meet him in person until the day before filming. So I got very lucky with both projects that, that I had a natural chemistry, but I just don't think people are really, um, you know, a lot of actors these days are getting offers for roles just in their inbox and they're not really doing chemistry tests and it's not like that magical feeling of finding two people who just have a really beautiful chemistry. Um, so definitely got lucky with these two, but but yeah. So talking about Musica now more specifically, I loved this movie. I thought it was like very clever and really funny. And the other thing about it is I'm not someone who would be like, oh, yeah, puppets. And I loved it. Like, <laughs> it I works. Loved that. It, it totally works. For some works. Reason. Biggest compliments to Rudy. I yeah. just thought it was like such a great script and a great yeah. movie. Um, can you tell viewers what to expect with Musica? Um, oh, it's so hard to boil it all into one thing um, because it, the truth is, is like it's not what you expect at all. And people keep telling us that they keep saying, like this is unlike anything I've ever seen before because there really is, you know, I can tell you all these reference points and all that, but ultimately um, it feels like such an original, fresh idea. Um, but I think the, you know, we call it a non-musical musical. musical. Mm -hmm. It's based on Rudy's life. Uh, about 80% of it is, is real and things that have actually happened to him. And it's told through the eyes of a synesthete. Rudy experiences a condition called synesthesia, which is basically when your sensory wires get tripped up. So like your, 
you know, you can hear Tuesday and smell an orange or, you know, like there's um, just a mixing of the senses. And for Rudy, it's, it's rhythmic association where he um, organizes everyday sounds into rhythm, into a, a musical construct. Um, so this movie is kind of like making music a character in that Rudy is constantly seeing um, these musical sequences around him that only he sees and nobody else is seeing. Uh, so it's got a really unique perspective. Um, it's set in New Jersey. He's got his mom in real life playing his mother in the film. And he's sort of balancing his relationship with his mother and his relationship with his ex slash on and off girlfriend and his relationship with my character, Isabella, who is the new girl in his life. Um, so he's kind of like caught in between these three women and it's what we're calling like a love square instead of a love triangle. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And it gets, it gets a little crazy, but we won't give anything yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and I'd say Isabella's like this too, but across many of your projects, you have this through line of these like self-assured, confident, mm -hmm. young female characters. Um, is there something about that that like draws you to these roles? Or like, what do you think casting directors see in you where they're <laughs> putting you in this light? I mean, I think it makes sense because my first big role was a role where I played a very confident character. Um, but, but I also think, you know, I was actually talking to Rudy about this last night that like, uh, well, he seems to think that I exude a natural confidence. And to me, it's always strange to hear that because I'm like, I feel really insecure about things and I'm very in my head all the time. But um, I think it's it's less confidence and more, as you said, like self-assured, mm -hmm. self-assuredness. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like I really, I don't have this feeling necessarily of like, I don't belong. Even though I get insecure about things, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm meant to do this. So I think that's like this natural confidence that maybe people pick up on that, that translates to my roles. Um, but yeah, I, I just think it, it was something that I, I booked a role that was very confident and it just kind of stuck. And now I'm stuck playing confident characters. I mean, I you play it well though, <laughs> you. like you really do. And you're someone who I'm always excited to see on screen. I was telling you about this before Thank we you. started, but I'm so excited every time I see you and I'm always rooting for you. And that's because we have something very important in common. We're both Latina. Oh my God, so where are you from? I'm Puerto Rican. Amazing. I know you're Brazilian and you know. Did you grow up here? I'm Yes, okay. I grew up here, nice. but like my family's Puerto Rican. So nice. I kind of have that whole side. And I know you've also talked about like, kind of growing up in one place and not necessarily being around that many yes. people like that and kind of finding it as you grow up. It's kind of like this this quest. So totally. we, we really share that. Amazing. And, um, now you're in a movie that's all about Brazilian culture and highlighting it. There's Brazilian leads. Yeah. Um, what's it like playing a character where your background is so much a part of the story this time around? It's amazing because I feel like I have been waiting for this moment my whole life. I, you know, have been auditioning or, or getting offers for roles that are all Spanish speaking. And that's been tough because I constantly have to remind people that I don't speak Spanish and that like, you know, justifying me not auditioning for it or not accepting a role because I have to explain to people that, you know, this, the right people will realize that this isn't okay. You know, like, like I would hate to see you know, a different, like a, a Puerto Rican playing a Brazilian in something and trying to like sound like she speaks Portuguese, like that would be yeah. insulting and offensive to me because I know there's so many able Brazilian people out there that could play it. Um, so it just felt really nice to finally just effortlessly step into a role and, and embrace, you know, my Brazilian culture and embrace the fact that um, that it has nuances that people don't even know about. So I also know just like more generally representation is something that's important to you and it's something you speak a lot about. And like I said, for me, it's exciting to just see you on screen and like, like we don't even speak exactly the same language, but yeah. it's enough to see another totally. Latina out there. Um, and I'm wondering like when you're thinking about future projects and dream roles, um, how does identity play into that? Um, are there certain qualities or plot lines that you really want to highlight going forward? I mean, something I tell myself a lot is that me existing in Hollywood and being Brazilian American is enough. Like, like I don't feel this pressure to to make myself, you know, only be a part of stories that are um, about 
Latin representation. Musica obviously is that, and I'm very happy to finally get the chance to do that. But ultimately, I just want to be in good shit. <laughs> like I just yeah. want to do good projects and, and be excited by the things that I do. Um, it, it's like, ultimately, I think the best representation is just seeing people like yourself who are thriving and who are, you know, being admired for their work and their talent, just like anybody else. Yeah. And I know you said like with upgraded, like having the name Anna Santos, like that's enough. Yes. And I totally, yes. I was like, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and even just being Anna Santos with like an S, yeah. like there's something about that that feels very like, you know, that's how, you know, the Portuguese descent, that's how it would be spelt. So I was like very, you know, um, mindful of little details like that. Yeah. So kind of speaking of those little details, I know you're stepping into more producing roles mm -hmm. um, with Musica and with Upgraded. What made you want to start getting behind the camera? At first, it was like a protective measure, um, a way for myself to ensure that I would be proud of the project. I think I've like had experiences in the past, like I've, I've gone through, you know, a decade of of Hollywood already and I've had my like disappointments and whatnot so I think for me I was like okay I want to make sure that that I get to have creative authority and contribute to these stories in a way that's more meaningful it kind of evolved into like a genuine love for it because I think I have a personality type that lends itself to producing I, I definitely like more control. I, I am very vocal about my creative opinions, and um, and I, you know, when I was at NYU, I studied at a at a theater school there. You know, they divide everybody into like seven different studios, and the studio that I got placed in was um, called Playwrights Horizons, and they kind of were all about creating the well-rounded artist. So we didn't just do acting; we did design, we did directing, we did producing. Um, playwriting, everything. And at first I was like, oh, I don't want anything to do with any of those other mediums. Like, I just want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. But then in the last few years, I've realized how much that has helped me and how now I step into that role more effortlessly because I, you know, I'm like, I spent 10 years on a TV show. I have a lot of experience. I actually have a lot to contribute in this way, in a way that I don't think anybody expects of me. Um, so, yeah, producing has kind of turned into this other career that I really love. You know, it sounds like you have a lot of really exciting things that you're looking forward to and that are coming together. And so kind of bringing it back to this movie, do you feel like you're a Rudier and Isabella when you look look ahead at where you see your career going post, you know, the success of Riverdale and now these projects? And I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm either because I think Rudy is very uncertain. Um, and a little bit too scattered. And Isabella's very grounded, but she's also very okay with not knowing the future. And I'm I'm very future oriented, and I and I I need to know what's next. And I I'm always like trying to come up with a plan. Um, so honestly, I can't say I'm Rudy or Isabella in that way. That's fair. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. This you can watch Mystica on Amazon Prime.